If by now you don't know the name Lori Ann Thompson, you need to. And by the end of this video, my hope is that you don't make the same mistake I did as you take her name on your lips. Because over the past couple of weeks, I've, I've shared videos, I've shared thoughts about Robbie Zacharias, RZIM, and the entire heartbreaking mess that they've created. Today, this video is dedicated to Lori Ann Thompson and to her husband, Brad, to their family, and to any women across the world who are walking through the pain of clergy abuse and church hurt and sexual abuse. Because in the second video I did about this, there were over 800 comments from you and just from people all over the world, just processing pain, giving opinions, and most importantly, asking questions. And the number one question that came up dozens and dozens of times was this, why didn't anybody bring this up before Robbie Zacharias died? Why now? Why didn't anybody come forward while he was alive so that he was able to defend himself? Well, there's one woman who did, Lori Ann Thompson, and we failed her. And this is my personal apology. So let's jump in and, and answer that number one question asked out of the nearly 900 comments on that last video. Why did everybody wait until after he died to bring these accusations against them? Because at first glance, it's an honest question, right? It might even seem like a valid one until you actually take 30 seconds to do some research. Because unfortunately, there were allegations against him in 2017 by a woman named Lori Ann Thompson. But the sad reality is nobody believed her. Some even blamed her. And her and her family were brutally attacked for it by Ravi Zacharias, by RZIM, and even by the public. She tried to give him the, the benefit of the doubt, the, the chance to defend himself, to come clean. But instead, he leaned in with everything he had, and he cashed in all of his relational capital, all of his financial capital, all of his spiritual capital in order to cover it up and essentially to bury her. And that's exactly what happened. So before we point any fingers, the question is, would you be brave enough to do what Lori Ann and Brad did? to put everything on the line, even if it meant losing everything you've ever had and, and every sense of friendship, every sense of normalcy, even needing to move to another state because of it? Or would you do what hundreds of other shattered victims did, seeing the, the shattered lives they faced by trying to expose the truth and waiting until it was safe again? I truly can't speak for them, nor would I ever try, but there's clear evidence and there's clear history that Ravi Zacharias' character was not to be questioned either internally at RZIM or externally by anyone else. And anyone who tried, anybody who tried when he was alive was shut down or ostracized or completely demonized. This completely destroyed Lori Ann Thompson's life and her family. And before you go there, yes, she is an adult and she did make decisions too. She owns that. She always has publicly. But when you realize the depth of manipulation and abuse and the power that he held over these women, some were even told, and, and I want you to hear this, some were even told that they'd be responsible for millions of souls if they told the truth. I can't even wrap my head around the falsity of that statement. The point is, by all accounts, it appears they were manipulated, they were bullied, and they were controlled by the fact that they were the only one. And they would personally be responsible for taking down a ministry that God was using. So when they did come forward, the investigators had, they had, they had enough credible evidence to finally understand and realize that Lori Ann Thompson's testimony and her story was true and that it, that it actually corroborated very closely with all the other stories. And I'm going to link to her, her full statement and her blog in the description below, but I want you to hear some of this from her in her own words before I say anything else that I have to say, because this is what happens when a victim comes forward. She says, I tried to tell a Christian counselor what was happening to me. He told me not to tell anyone, especially not my husband, that he could see RZ's draw to me, and that if anyone ever found out, the kingdom of God would be irreparably damaged. I was contacted by text, email, and phone from RZ once I sent him a final email. He threatened to commit suicide if I broke my silence. I was terrified in that moment and for a long time to come. To my betrayer, telling anyone was betrayal. Abusers not only demand silence, they enforce it. We were torn apart. I can hardly find the words to describe the complete and utter relational, emotional, psychological, and physical implosion. What were we going to do? We could go to the media. We could go to survivor bloggers, the board, which included some of RZ's family, hire a lawyer to confront privately, or we could do nothing. Given the expansive power differential and our desire for privacy, we chose to confront RZ with a lawyer. 
we held the view that powerful people who target, groom, and exploit others should be held accountable. We and our legal team underestimated the level of retaliation and backlash that we'd receive. RZ used a former local church abuse experience where my husband and I had been victims financially and spiritually of an abusive cleric to support his fantastical claim that we were a litigious couple who sued people for financial gain. While this narrative is as verifiably false as it is reprehensible, it was also, it was also widely parroted and propagated by RZIM. RZ as an individual and RZIM as an institution took a prior abuse situation that fractured my husband and I years previously and used that information to publicly and falsely crucify us. The consequences of trying to hold RZ to account for his abusive and predatory behavior was that, was, was that my husband and I not only had to endure endless interpersonal atrocities, but we were also widely and publicly humiliated and vilified. The betrayal trauma that was incurred because of RZ and RZIM crushed our relationship to each other, to God, and it severed our connection with the wider faith community. While I'm immensely grateful that we still have each other, I'm grieved that we've lost much of our faith, nearly all of our friends, and we're inhibited in the process of making new ones. To my fellow advocates, thank you for speaking for me when and where I could not speak for myself. To my fellow survivors, hold fast. There is hope. There is hope help. All will not always be lost. What happened to you does not have to have the last word. You do. It's, it's, th it's with this hope that this is my final statement on my own behalf, but I'll never stop speaking on yours. To Lori Ann Thompson specifically, and to anyone else who's been a victim of Ravi Zacharias, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that you were brutally silenced, not just by the one who abused you, but by so many who have no idea what you and your family are going through or what you've gone through over these years. You tried. You tried. You tried to expose an evil that was done to you in private by making it public, and then we, as the public, turned on you. I turned on you. I'm so sorry that my voice unknowingly at the time and in my pride was one of the mocking voices that drove your shame even deeper. Even though I never said any of it publicly, <clears throat> I'm ashamed for it. And for that, I ask your forgiveness. From you, from your family, my heart breaks for you. You said it perfectly in your blog last week when you said, you said having a platform does not make you an expert in sexual abuse or in predation or in victimology. This is a time when you should be listening, not talking, unless you definitively know what you're doing. This is a time to mourn and to ask hard questions of yourselves and of others, a time to acknowledge your own complicity, a time to seek wise counsel and to look forensically. May we all move forward in these next weeks, months, and years with the wisdom that you just shared echoing in the depths of our souls. May we be quick to listen and slow to speak. We who weren't there have no idea what happened or what you went through. As someone with my own scars from severe emotional abuse growing up, I can't imagine finally speaking out only to have it spit right back in my face and turn back on me. Like so many others who trusted Ravi, his character, and RZIM, I didn't believe you, and I'm sorry. Just as you went public at the risk of your family and your faith and your entire future, it's, it's our turn, it's my turn to go public and confess our sin, our hypocrisy, our pride, our cold-hearted betrayal to you and to the hundreds of other women and their husbands and their families. Lori, this might be too little, too late, and if it is, I'll own that. Because like you said, this is my time to listen. This is my time to understand and to fight with you and to pray. And as I do, I pray one day, I pray someday that the God of all grace, who's called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Listen, if you're watching right now and you feel the same way as I do, or, or you just want to stand with Lorianne and her family and the hundreds of other women that are involved in this, would you please send them a note of encouragement in the comments? 
guys, this is not about views or engagement or, or, or just a, a, a ton of comments. What This is about doing what's right. It's for real people out there. Let's, let's show her, let's show her and these families that we stand with them. So send her a note. I'm, I'm praying that we can flood them with thousands of love letters and infuse them with hope and encouragement and the promise that we hear them, that we see them, and that we believe them. And please, only share positive, loving comments here, all right? Fight for them by speaking into them. They don't need our opinions anymore. They need our love and support. And then pray for Lori Ann Thompson and her family, for healing moving forward, for, for broken pieces redeemed. Pray this for every single victim. And then pray for your heart and mind. Pray for protection that we would guard it and, and now use what we know to protect others. I'm also linking to Lori Ann's personal website down in the uh, description below. If you're a victim of clergy abuse or sexual abuse, she has an entire resource page with world-renowned experts who have walked her and walked so many others through the darkest nights of their souls. All those links are gonna be in the description. So God bless you guys. Thanks for watching today. Please encourage them in the comments. Let them know that you love them, that you're with them, and, and keep seeking Christ first in your lives. I'll see you next time.